We are back with a Fox News alert. Sources now tell our own Ed Henry that Republicans have released their witness they'd like to call up in the impeachment inquiry. On that list, Hunter Biden and one of his partners at Burisma, Nellie Orr, is also on the list. Well, Republican Congressman Ross Spano is here to react. So, Congressman, thanks for being here this morning. Also on this list, the whistleblower. I've got Ed's notes right in front of me, as well as other people in the intelligence community. So is this a sign that Republicans are prepared, prepared to go back on the offense here? I think it is. And uh, first of all, thank you for having me this morning. Happy, uh, happy Saturday. Uh, I think it is. I'm excited to see some of these witnesses that we've placed on the list. It's finally, finally, we have an opportunity to to kind of get to the bottom of uh, what's going on and to round out some of the evidence uh, to, to, to heretofore. As you know, it's been a very one sided sham of a process. So uh, let's hope that Chairman Schiff will allow these witnesses to testify. All right. So you you just let off with what my next question was going to be, which is Chairman Schiff. Does he at the, he's been behind closed doors in a skiff with unclassified uh, material, which didn't have to be classified and could have been done in public. What makes you believe that even this list would ch make him change his tune at all? Well, I have to be honest with you. I'm not optimistic that it will make him change his tune. Uh, after we uh, voted uh, on a resolution, which I happened to vote against, uh, no on last week, which purported to create a new transparent and open process, I found out on Saturday as I'm flying home from the border that there were a number of depositions take pl taking place this, this past week that were closed. I also find out from members of the hearing a few weeks ago that Chairman Schiff actually directed the witness not to answer a line of inquiry or questions that the minority party had asked. So, you know, given the fact that the process has been so one-sided, I really am not optimistic that, that he will allow it to be open and transparent, as they claim. And I'm, I'm, I'm betting that he will uh, reject the, uh, the subpoenas for requests for these witnesses the minority party has offered. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I hope he does, but I don't think he will. Ultimately, this, this may play out in public, but it can still be a show if it's totally rigged. When you go back, to, we're going to get to the border in a second because you wrote a great piece at FoxNews.com about that. But when you go back to your district or you talk to people that are watching this process play out, the, the way it's perceived in the public is extremely important if you're going to make the case for impeachment. How are average Americans viewing this process? I can tell you they're disgusted. Been home all week, been to Kiwanis meetings, been to local meetings in the district, and almost without exception, every person that I talk to is absolutely disgusted. And they really want the, uh, the, uh, their representatives in Congress to start doing what they elected us to do, and that is solving some of the big problems that we have, including the issues at the southern border. When well, you're talking about that problem on the southern border, as I mentioned, there's an opinion piece at FoxNews.com entitled this. Six GOP House members, Democrats obsessed with impeachment ignore border crisis part of uh, you're one of the authors of that piece explain what's being missed at the border because Washington is so obsessed with this witch hunt well, thank you for having me on to talk about this specifically. This past week, uh, weekend, I went with five of my colleagues to the Rio Grande Valley, which is the most trafficked portion of the southern border. And uh, we went to see some of the things that are being done by the president under his leadership, uh, including uh, construction of a new piece of wall there, which was encouraging. But there's still some great vulnerabilities that the Democrats are really not addressing. So after the first five months of this past year, saying there was no crisis at the border, finally in June, they acknowledged that there was when a bipartisan majority of both the House and the Senate voted to provide some emergency funding. But then just a few months later, uh, Speaker Pelosi called for the third time to overturn and reject the president's uh, emergency crisis resolution. So how can you vote in favor of funding to support a crisis and then two or three months later say there is no crisis? Here's something else, too. Um, we have not, we're now one month into the new fiscal year. We don't have one annual budget uh, bill that has been signed into law. The Homeland Security Appropriations Package has not even be, been considered by the House, and none of those proposed uh, annual budget plans gives any money whatsoever for funding to secure the border. And to make it even worse, the, uh, the defense budget bill has yeah. language that specifically precludes the use of money for the border. So it's an absolute rejection of what's going on. It's uh, turning your backs on what the American people want. And, and worse than that, we're continuing with this uh, impeachment obsession and not solving the real problems, well, they, which include the problem at the Speaker Pelosi border. has tried to say from the beginning, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We're going to pursue this inquiry, but we're going to still do the things we were elected to do. It's becoming clearer every single day, if all your focus is on impeachment, you're not getting anything else done. Representative, thank you very much uh, for your time and for going to the border. We appreciate it.
Thank you so much for having me, and uh, happy Veterans Day to uh, all of our veterans out there. We Absolutely. appreciate you. You're all heroes. You got it, sir. Thank you.